Chevrolet has always had a knack for building experimental machines that never quite made it to the showroom floor, but ended up shaping the future of American performance. They called them CERVs, or Chevrolet Engineering Research Vehicles. And each one was a rolling laboratory, stuffed with technology that the public usually wouldn't see until years later. The first three were mid-engined oddities, purpose-built to explore racing technology or future chassis development. But the CERV4, unveiled in 1992, was different. It wasn't a futuristic showpiece with wild bodywork or radical aerodynamics. In fact, it was just a humble C4 Corvette shell. But inside, that familiar fiberglass shape looked the beginnings of one of the most important engines of the modern era the Gen 3 small block V8, the foundation of the Alice family. Now at first glance, calling the CER V4 a research vehicle feels like overselling it. Unlike its predecessors, it didn't look like an engineering experiment at all. It was basically a Corvette C4 with a slightly reworked interior and an engine bay stuffed with a new kind of small block. The earlier CERVs had been bold and dramatic. The first, built under Zora Arkas Dantov in 1959, was a mid-engined, open-wheel testbed that looked like something ready for Indianapolis. The CERV2, showed in 1964, was a wild four-wheel drive mid-engine sports prototype with 500 horsepower, way ahead of its time. The CERV3, in 1990, was a twin-turbo 650 horsepower concept that looked like a spaceship and cost GM a fortune. And then along came the CERV4, and it looked, well, like another Corvette. So it was underwhelming. Well, not really, because while the others were show ponies or racing experiments, the CERV4's real job was to bring life to a new engine. You see, the early 1990s were not exactly the glory years for GM. The Corvette was still saddled with the aging L98 small block, an engine that dated back to the 1950s in architecture. Sure, it had been updated with fuel injection and aluminium heads, but the bones were ancient. GM knew it needed something entirely new if it was going to carry the small block legacy into the 21st century. That project became the Gen 3 small block V8, which would eventually power everything from Corvettes to pickup trucks. But before unleashing it onto public roads, GM needed a mule. And that's where the CERV4 enters the story. So, in May of 1993, GM rolled out the first working prototype of the new engine, a 5 litre unit with an iron block and aluminium heads, dropped neatly into a Corvette body. That car became known as the CERV4A, and it was put straight to work, pounding around the GM Milford proving grounds. This wasn't just a casual shakedown, it was the first time the world's most important V8 in decades would prove itself outside of a dyno cell. The engineers were testing everything, cooling systems, durability, lubrication, emissions and drivability. Eight months later, a second car joined the fleet the CERV4B, this time with a 5.7 litre version of the Gen 3, still with an iron block and aluminium heads. If the 4A was about proving the concept, then the 4B was about stretching its legs and refining the platform. Together they logged thousands of miles, and every squeak, rattle and detonation helped refine what would become the Alice 1. And the really significant thing about the CERV4 was that it was the only CERV with a front mounted engine. The others had been radical mid engine experiments, usually hinting at Corvette concepts that never made it to production. But this one was grounded firmly in reality. GM wasn't playing around with exotic layouts. They were developing a mass market power plant that needed to work in Corvettes, Camaros, Silverados, and eventually everything from SUVs to luxury sedans. What makes the CERV4 fascinating is that it's easy to dismiss it as just a C4. But think about what came out of it. The Alice engine family, first launched in the 1997 Corvette C5 with the Alice 1, became one of the most significant V8 platforms in history. It was light, 
compact, simple, powerful and incredibly adaptable. It powered cars that went racing at Le Mans and trucks that towed horse trailers. It spawned variants that made everything from 300 to 700 horsepower straight from the factory. And thanks to its strength, it became the darling of hot rodders, tuners and engine swappers everywhere. Without the CERV4 testing those early iron blocks, none of that would have happened. Those test cars were the hidden stage where the Alice was born, where the engineers could break engines, fix them and learn from them, all under the guise of an ordinary Corvette body. Of course, the CERV4 never made headlines in the way the early prototypes did. There was no motor show reveal, no wild concept drawings, just two quiet Corvettes running endless laps at Milford with engines nobody outside GM had seen before. But in hindsight, that was precisely its genius. Unlike the flashy CERV3 that ended up as a footnote, the CERV4 was practical, purposeful and utterly transformative. And when you look at the Corvette's history, the CERV4 feels like a bridge between eras. On one side, you had the aging small block V8 architecture, stretching back to 1955. On the other, you had the modern LS, which would go on to dominate not just Corvettes, but the entire performance aftermarket for decades. And right in the middle sat a humble looking C4 test mule with an experimental engine under its hood, quietly rewriting history. But yeah, at the end of this video, Please let me know what you thought of the video, what did you think of the story of this car and if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Now if you guys did like this video you'll most probably enjoy most of my other stuff so just go through my channel, see if there's someone's a like, I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.